In this video, we are going to discuss how to start your own superworm colony. Before we begin our superworm breeding, we need to assess the quality of our worms. You want to pick worms that are bright and healthy looking and well hydrated. Worms that have just arrived to you or you've just picked them up from the store are not good candidates to become beetles. You want to let your worms eat and grow and become hydrated before they are isolated to turn into beetles. If you choose dehydrated worms, they're more likely to pass away before becoming beetles. For superworms to pupate into beetles, they need to be isolated. This is because in their species, unfortunately, cannibalism is rather common. I am using a small plastic tackle box to separate my worms. I've also had luck in the past with miniature cups. However, I do use two at a time because the superworm can chew through one individual cup. I've also heard of people having success with film canisters. I'll be honest, I've never actually seen one of these in person, but I'm sure they work great for a lot of people. I usually do not include any food with the superworms when they're preparing to pupate. This is because giving them food can sometimes slow down the process, I've found, and if you're using well hydrated, well fed, large superworms, you're not going to have a problem with them going hungry before they decide to pupate. The selected worms will then need to be stored in a warm, dark area. The ideal temperature is somewhere around 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It is also important to not have a clear or translucent bin during this time because we do need to keep it dark. Think of it like a sensory deprivation tank for our superworms. I'm guessing that becoming a pupa takes a lot of concentration. I check in on the worms at approximately four days later. I find that I have one pupa. While he or she may look a little strange, this is actually exactly what we want our pupa to look like. I check back on the superworms a few days later. There are a few signs here that indicate that things are going in the correct direction. The first is that some of the superworms have shed their outer shell. This is because they are growing and preparing to pupate. Another good sign that we're headed in the right direction is that some of the worms are curling up in almost a C or E looking shape. They assume this position right before they begin pupation. So when we see worms in this position, usually still, they are not dead, but instead preparing to pupate. As time passes, you should be seeing more worms begin to take on the C-shaped or E-shaped appearance, and you may start to see more worms beginning to pupate. Towards the end of the pupa stage, you'll begin to see the arms of the new beetle as well as the little eyes. When the beetle first emerge, they are usually a reddish color. However, over the next 24 hours, they will transition to a more dark black color. I then choose to add my beetles to the same container in which I keep my adult superworms. The superworms tend to stick to the middle or bottom of the bin while the beetles walk along the surface. As long as you are supplying your bugs with enough food, this has never really been an issue for me. Just be sure to have sources of hydration for your worms so they do not eat the eggs. About a week later, I was actually able to capture one of my beetles laying eggs on camera. These eggs will soon turn into tiny superworms. Over time, you may start to notice the tiny worms, but you're going to need to hold off on feeding them until they're large enough. Once they reach the desired size, you can go ahead and feed them off to your reptiles or other animals. Because of their high fat content, they're best as an occasional treat. 